So if you want the definition for one mole of a substance, uh, then I've written it down in 6.1.1, right? Uh, you can just pause the video and copy it down. So what we're going to start with here is balancing the equation between sodium carbonate and hydrochloric acid, right? Uh, the equation is already given to us, but it's unbalanced, right? So that makes our job a little bit uh, more easy. So let's go ahead and try and balance our equation. So on the left hand side, we have two atoms of Na, right? And then on the right hand side, we only have one. So that means that uh, the number of atoms of Na are not balanced. But how can we balance that? If we put a coefficient of two here, then we're going to have two atoms of Na on both sides, right? So now we can move from Na and go to carbon on the left hand side uh, we have one carbon atom and then on the right hand side we also have one carbon atom so the carbon atoms are already balanced uh, we can move to the oxygen right uh, here we have three oxygen atoms and then on the right hand side uh, we have one here and two here so we have three oxygen atoms on the left and the right hand side so the oxygen atoms are balanced let's go to the hydrogens here we have one hydrogen on the left hand side and then on the right hand side we have two hydrogens we have h2 right so the hydrogens are not balanced how can we balance them if we put a coefficient of two on the left hand side then we're gonna have two hydrogens on the left hand side and two hydrogens on the right hand side uh, now let's look at cl right uh, we have two atoms of Cl on the left hand side. On the right hand side, because of this coefficient 2 that we use to balance the Na, we also have two Cl, right? So now our equation is balanced. We only had to add two here on HCl and two on NaCl. Let's do 6.1.3. So 6.1.3 says, uh, calculate the mass of sodium carbonate uh, that reacted. And then um, there's seven marks. In order to do these questions, you have to be extremely sober. There's no other way around it, right? You have to be, yeah, extremely sober. So let's look at our statement, right? We are told that in an experiment, Elena added 1.5 grams of sodium carbonate, right? To hydrochloric acid, a volume of 306 centimeter cube of carbon dioxide was formed and collected under standard pressure at room temperature. Take the molar gas volume at room temperature as 24.45 decimeter cube, right? Uh, so let me just copy down the equation again real quick because yeah, we have to use this equation, right? Uh, if we don't have the equation and we just write in things, then it becomes yeah, all over the show, right? Uh, they need to be clarity in our writing, right? Uh, so we are told that uh, at the end of the day, uh, we have a volume of 306 centimeter cube of CO2 produced. And for the sodium carbonate, uh, we are given an initial mass, uh, which is 1.5 uh, grams, right? So of this 1.5 grams, not all of it reacted, right? That's why the question is asking us to calculate the mass that reacted. But how can we calculate the mass that reacted? Using the CO2, right? Uh, the volume of CO2 that was produced, we can find the number of moles of CO2 that we produce and then with the number of moles of co2 that we produce we're gonna then use the mole ratio to find the number of moles of na2co3 that reacted and from the number of moles we can find the mass let me show you what i'm talking about uh, let's not forget that here we have the balancing coefficients uh, so the number of moles uh, number of moles of co2 uh, we go into have uh, the number of moles being equals to the volume divided by molar gas volume, right? If you have a volume of a gas, that's how you can find the number of moles. You use this formula here. So what is the volume? Uh, we know fully well that the volume is 
306 centimeter cube, right? But then in chemistry, we don't use centimeter cube, we use decimeter cube. So what do we do? We divide by a thousand from centimeter to decimeter cube. So we're gonna say divided by a thousand and then we divide by molar gas volume is given to us as 22.24.45 uh, decimeter cube. And then if you punch that in your calculator, you're gonna get 0 0.0125 moles per decimeter cube, right? So now we have the number of moles of CO2 that were formed with part of the sodium carbonate that reacted. Now using the mole ratio, we're going to be able to find the moles of Na2CO3 that reacted and consequently the mass that reacted, right? So now we can see the number of moles of CO2 divided by the number of moles of Na2CO3 is equal to the balancing coefficient. What is the balancing coefficient on CO2? The balancing coefficient is 1, right? And then the balancing coefficient of Na2CO3 is also 1. Yeah, if you're still so confused and you don't even know what a balancing coefficient is, uh, is this number here, right? You can see for NaCl, the number is 2. For HCl, the number is 2. For Na2CO3, we don't have anything, right? But we actually have, it's 1, right? And then for CO2, it's also 1. Just in case, just in case. So now we can say that the number of moles of Na2CO3 will be equal to you. We cross multiply and we're multiplying everything by one, right? So it will just remain how it is. It's equal to the number of moles of CO2 uh, being equals to 0 0.0125 moles uh, per decimeter cube. So now we have the number of moles of NH2CO3 that reacted and we can then find the mass, right? Uh, because we know fully well that the number of moles is equal to the mass divided by the molar mass if you're dealing uh, with a solid, right? So now we can say that uh, this is for Na2CO3. Let's not forget that. So now we can see that the mass is equal to uh, the number of moles divided by the molar mass. We cross multiply, right? So we're going to have 0 0.0125 uh, multiplied by the molar mass of Na2CO3. Uh, it's 106. You can verify that on your periodic table, right? And then the answer we get in now is 1.3 uh, grams, right? So that's the mass of Na2CO3 that reacted, right? Uh, let's do 6.1.4. 6.1.4. Uh, Congrats the percentage of sodium carbonate in excess. So we have the mass that reacted right we have the mass uh initial that we started with right so we can find the mass in excess right uh because let's say uh for adam and eve's sake right uh you have initially uh you had five apples and then something happens to your apple and then after right in excess, basically, you have two apples. How many apples were used? You would say three, right? So this is just telling us that uh, the mass that is used is equal to uh, the mass initial uh, minus the mass in excess, right? You cannot deny for Adam and Eve's sake. So the mass initial uh, is given to us as 1.5, right? Uh, the mass in excess, uh, that's what we're looking for, mass in excess, right? And then the mass used is what we calculated here, right? Uh, we have 1.33. So now you're going to take uh, this term to the left-hand side, right? You're going to have 1.33 minus uh, 1.5, right? And you're going to get uh, minus 0 0.17. Uh, being equals to minus uh, the mass in excess, right? Uh, it's easy. Divide both sides by minus 1 and then the mass in excess uh, is equal to 0 0.17 grams, right? So now we can say that uh, the percentage 
of CaCO3 in excess, right? Um, will be equals to uh, so we have 0 0.17 divided by uh, the initial mass, which is 1.5. Uh, multiply by a hundred obviously we want the percentage so that will be 11.33 are uh, carrying right and so on percent so you can see here the kind of stuff we do in that uh you have no choice you have to be yeah extremely sober right let's do 6.2 uh 6.2 is saying that uh zinc reacts uh, with sulfuric acid according to the reaction below right and then there we have our reaction the mass of zinc is recorded during the experiment and is showed on the graph below uh, the reaction stops after two minutes right so yeah let's analyze our graph for just a second initially we had a mass of five grams right at t is equals to zero and then after some time uh, the mass is now 2 grams and it stays at 2 grams, right? And then 6.2.1 says, name the substance that is the limiting reactant, right? Let's analyze our situation. We have zinc and sulfuric acid, right? The mass of zinc starts at 5 grams, right? Here. And then 2 grams, um, it never goes down. It remains there. Clearly, what was causing uh, the mass of zinc to be converted to something else is depleted, right? So zinc is being limited by something it's reacting with here. And the only thing it's reacting with is sulfuric acid, right? So the substance that is acting as the limiting reagent uh, is the sulfuric acid, right? So 6.2.1, you just say... Uh, sulfuric acid and now we can do 6.2.2 6.2.2 says calculate the initial concentration of the sulfuric acid if 50 centimeter cube of the acid was used all the time when i have a question like this i'm going to write the formula down right if i cannot see the formula on the answer sheet it's just yeah too confusing for me so i have the zinc plus H2SO4 uh, giving me uh, ZNSO4 <laughs> I don't know what the name of that is plus H2 yeah stories the question is saying uh, from the sulfuric acid let's find the initial concentration right but because you are chemist we know that to find uh, the concentration we need the number of moles and the volume right uh, but I kid you not, they've given us the volume here. So what we want is only the number of moles. We know that the volume is equal to uh, 50 centimeter cube, right? Which we are obviously going to convert to decimeter cube. So we want the initial concentration. So we, we need the number of moles of H2SO4, right? The number of moles of H2SO4. How can we find that? We can use zinc, right? because we know fully well the mass of zinc that reacted right again for adam and eve's sake initially we had five grams of zinc and then after some time we have two grams so how much reacted it should be clear to see that three grams of zinc reacted right so now we can say that uh with regards to zinc we know that uh, the mass that reacted is three grams right so from the mass we can find the number of moles of zinc that reacted and from the number of moles of zinc that reacted we can use the mole ratio to find the number of moles of h2so4 if we have the number of moles and we have the volume we have the concentration and we are done with our problem right so let me show you what i'm talking about now we see that the number of moles is equal to the mass divided by the molar. So what is the mass? The mass is 3, right? And the molar mass of zinc, uh, that is 65. And when you punch that in your calculator, you should get uh, 0 0.0462 uh, moles, right? Again, the mole ratio. So the number of moles of Zn divided by the number of moles of H2SO4 should be equal to 
the ratio of the balancing coefficients. So we have one divided by one, right? So the number of moles of H2 as O4 is equal to the number of moles of zinc, which is equal to 0.0462. I wish we had a problem where the mole, the balancing coefficients were not one and one because I feel like uh, people will make mistakes because in other questions you might not get one is to one. So make sure you go and watch other videos on acid and bases so that you can see how you manipulate uh, this kind of equation when you don't have a balancing coefficient of one and one, right? But yeah, stories. So now the number of moles of H2SO4 is that, right? And then now we can find the concentration. That's what the question is asking us to do. Concentration is equal to number of moles divided by volume. So we have 0 0.0462 divided by uh, the volume, right? Uh, 50 centimeter cube. Obviously, we're going to divide it by 1,000. We deal with a uh, decimeter cube. We are chemists, right? And when you punch that in your calculator, uh, I wish you get 0 0.92 moles per decimeter cube. 